Agro Expo opens today. Constable Bowler's protests DPP. Millions lost in Brickdown Fire. And another case of justice denied. I am Noriko Bullford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. The CARICOM Agri-Investment Forum and Expo formally opened today. The three-day event is aimed at improving investment in regional agriculture to reduce the increasing food import bill, which currently is estimated at US $6 billion, to boost food systems and to ensure food security throughout the region, supposedly. Strategies to achieve the goal of reducing the food import bill and achieving food security must be grounded in a framework that involves the community, the private sector, and international donor partners. Or at least that's what they hope to do at the end of said conference. And while foreign politicians hobnob with the Guyanese rich snobs in the cultural center, Police Constable Seanette Bowler spent her Thursday protesting in front of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions following the DPP's decision to discontinue the charge against attorney-at-law Navon Singh, the son of former Chancellor of the Judiciary, Carl Singh. Bowler told the press that she deserves to have her case heard as she has been denied even the right to a fair hearing because of an act of obvious interference. Jack Diao has come out in support of an MOU with Trinidad, considering it as a way forward to removing a range of non-tariff barriers. He stayed clear of saying whether there should be strict timeliness for the scrapping of the barriers, even as he acknowledged that there is some skepticism about MOUs, especially with Trinidad. The GCC has been complaining about Trinidad's barriers to agricultural products from Guyana, both in transit and on land. The PNC is currently keeping up the Guyanese political tradition of making bombastic claims and not providing evidence to back it up. They have yet again claimed that there are irregularities in the registration of Venezuelan migrants, but they again refuse to disclose what these irregularities are. At its press conference yesterday, the party's general secretary, Gita Chanand Admin, asserted that the party received the report which highlights what these irregularities are. When asked specifically what those irregularities are, the party's general secretary refused to disclose them. However, Norton was a bit more direct by suggesting that the government is passing out birth certificates of Venezuelan migrants in Region 1 like candy, in an alleged scheme to pad the voters' list. Despite the gravity of this shocking and serious claim, they have yet to bring forward this damning information they supposedly have. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2015 Audi A3. It comes with Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, electronic parking brake, bar camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $5 million, or pay as low as $1 million down with around $90,000 monthly, and it's yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info, or visit the showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rocher, Queenstown, or Lot 2 La Marche, and tell them the Rico for the sweet, sweetie. Another state institution is blaming the Rona for its systemic issues. The Guyana Police Force's training officer, Keith On King, said the number of officers on the force has been severely hampered as the pandemic forced them to suspend recruitment for the past two years. But on the bright side, he did say that the force is using this time to implement a system in hopes of boosting the quality of their recruits. For example, new recruits will have to have at least passed three CXC subjects and display a high level of professionalism. In other police-related news, the Home Affairs Ministry says the fire at the Brickdown Police Station destroyed just over $104 million in equipment, exhibits, and vehicles. The list of things destroyed included 36 body cameras worth $2.5 million, 60 beds, 20 laptops, 6 copy machines, 2 heavy-duty staple machines, 2 digital recorders, and 1 minibus. Director General of the CDC, Lt. Col. Kester Craig, is retiring early from the GDF. He is currently on accumulated vacation leave, which could take him straight into his early retirement next year once it is approved. The 42-year-old Craig told Gordon Mosley that he has served the GDF since 1997 and has been heading the CDC for the past five years. In that time, he's elevated the status and the abilities of the commission, so he's ready to leave on a high note while he's still young. Also, he promises that he was not pressured to step down at all, even though Mosley says there have been reports that the administration was about to replace him soon. For the best crotch in Guyana, wait... 
That should read, for all size clutch discs and pressure plates for heavy-duty trucks in Guyana, check out Powered Automotive. Get this and other high-quality truck parts at the lowest prices. Visit them at lot 1161EE Eccles, or call them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. The Ministry of Education has launched the GROW program, which is aimed at helping secondary school dropouts finish their studies and even move on to university-level programs. Applicants can either apply for a Scottish Credit Qualifications Framework, Levels 5 and 6 Diploma, or a General Education Development Diploma, more commonly known in America as a GED Diploma. Totally getting like foreign. For both programs, classes and exams will be online during evening hours. If you are interested, you can check out Gold's website at www.gold.edu.gy. I promise they did not pay us for this placement. I just really feel like people need to get educated. But you know, if the Ministry of Education wants to sponsor us, I mean, hey, give us the money. Now for today's oil update. Amid controversy over the use of one consultant for all its environmental impact studies, ExxonMobil declared that the next study will not be executed by ERM. Manager for the Gas Shore project, Frederick Crispin, explained this yesterday during a public discussion at the West Demerara Secondary School in Pudroy. By the way, the public consultations are still going on, so... And oh, and also there's one every night at a different location all throughout, you know, Guyana. So if you want to have your voice heard on the project, now is the time to show up. Anyway, these sessions are being held by ERM to discuss the findings of its environmental impact assessment for the Gas Shore project. However, what they did not say was who would be replacing them. Probably that Alison Redford woman. Oh well. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff's Security Service. Sheriff's Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest, now hire the best. Hire Sheriff's Security Service today. Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? Just how failed this nation's justice system is. On first glance, it's easy to look at Constable Bowler's case and declare the DPP's decision as racially motivated. But I would argue that it goes deeper than that. Even if the charge against Navarre was drunken vehicular manslaughter or check fraud or even drug smuggling or any of the like, the result for him would have been the same. Not because of his race, but because of his tribe. Yes, he is a member of the untouchable class of politically and financially connected tribes that exist in Guyana. This is why I say Guyana doesn't have a race problem, it has a tribe problem. And those powerful tribes have absolute control over many elements of this nation, including the justice system. Because the same justice system that is denying Constable Bowler's justice is the same system that denied justice to the families of Jude Bentley, Faiz Narendat, and countless others, irrespective of their race. Now, this is not to say that no poor person ever receives justice, but cases like the ones I named make it very obvious that wealth often supersedes justice in Guyana. And if you ask me, allowing that to continue is pretty stupid. Now for our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it plays to us. Yesterday, I asked for your opinion about the new laws that were recently passed in Parliament. Mr. Sam says Ghana's problem has argumentatively never been a shortage of laws. It is the enforcement of the current laws that has always been the problem and the lack of repercussions for the agents who should be enforcing the laws. I agree with that 100%. Guy Bryan has a similar sentiment. He says making new laws and not enforcing ones that are already in place is very foolish, but it's benefiting them. Indeed, you know it is. Navindra Lal says the government should first sign into law to cut the fat cat salary in half. I agree 100% and give it to the people. And finally, Gixa Ripper gave a set of suggestions for laws that sound great. He spoke of laws regarding land use and ownership, the capacity for business owners and managers to protect their investments, as well as new tax laws, and even the importation of more family-sized vehicles to help reduce the carbon footprint of the nation. I like those ideas. But if you didn't get a chance, you could just, you know, pause the video and and read back all of his suggestions. So, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. 
Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. For tonight's question, I want to get a little controversial. I want to know, how do you feel about the Jarnet Bolas case? Do you feel the DPP was right to step in, or should the law have been allowed to take its course? Honestly, it disturbs me profoundly that one singular individual has that much power over this nation's justice system. But that's just me. I want to hear from you. So, I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nicole Bullford saying goodnight, folks.